YouTube, how's it going? It's me again, Dr. Rosie, and I wanted to show something really important. Have you ever sat down on your computer and then you're just like, mm, can't get something out and I don't know what to do. It's it's eating me up and I'm annoyed by my life. I'm annoyed by the things that exist in my life. I want to create something and just escape reality for two seconds, but the computer won't let me allow it. <laughs> So this is something that I kind of learned over the years and I wanted to share this with stream and YouTube. This is something I call loop theory. This is a cool little experiment and exercise really for you to get out of the, the creative rut and actually feel something and enjoy making music. So in this video, you will see how that can help you out. Uh, if you like the video, please like the video. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe and press the notification bell because this is valuable info that I'm trying to showcase and hopefully people actually enjoy stuff like this. And when you do subscribe and press the notification bell, it further tells me that you want me to constantly post. So tell your dad. Okay, anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye for now. So there's been times where people have been very stuck with a specific idea. So they will have, let's just say, okay, we have a, a four chord pattern. So let's just pick a scale of E minor and we have a four chord pattern. We go the fundamental. Now to spice it up, I would do, I would use this seventh of it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I'll go copy and paste, uh, put it to E and then bring one down, bring one down. Okay, so we have this going on. Okay, so we have this like going down the thing happening. So this is where people get confused because they start working on this this entire sh right? So we'll go build this chord right now, whatever, you know. Okay, so I, I'm just, I'm just kind of like eyeballing it. Get your chords right first. Okay, we're sticking that. Now people are going to be like, oh no, now I want a f***ing bass note. And then people get stuck right here because they're just like, I, I don't like this. I don't like this one bit. So we have only four bars and people get stuck here and they're just like, all right, f*** it. Let me just loop it. And then they get full eight bars. Two. Three. Four. And then they're like, ah. And then if I loop it again. But this is when they get f***ed up because they didn't resolve it. They need to resolve the chords. And how can you resolve a chord? By using your eighth bar and literally changing it to something completely different than what you have. Stick to a note, wh whatever you decide. There we go. And now we have a B in there. So let's let me change this. And now, now what we just did is just spiced up the only eighth bar because now people have like your ear is not expecting that. Your ear has finally adjusted and then it becomes a perfect loop. You can hear this loop over and over again and never be tired of it. So now this is what we have done. This is when we kind of get spicy with it. So I would suggest instead of using main, like just like on each one. You spice it up, spice it up. There we go. Now we have a full eight bar with spice. We s that feels so much better. Now, there's this is where it gets crazy. Even now, at this point, even though it's kind of a perfect loop, you will still get a little like, you know, like, I don't know what else to do here. This is when the cool part comes in. You go into any preset you got, type in pads or whatever you want, anything. You make a little thingy thing and then <laughs> that's, that's an ass tie pad. I'm, I'm just going to hold B.
just one constant, okay? In your head, you know, you're like, that's annoying. Like, I, I don't know why does this sound so bad. I need more notes. So we're gonna make a loop out of this and then we're gonna do four bars, but we're gonna change it on the fourth. Look at it again. We have one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight. We're gonna shift it to fourth and then just do and loop that. Okay? Okay? But it doesn't feel right because the eighth bar. So we're gonna go back to the eighth, full eight bars, and change this, the eighth one. A perfect loop! We're keeping it consistent, changing, but yet still repetitive. You can keep going. You can go ahead and apply another f***ing serum. I don't know, like go to serum and then type in flux. Pick what you want, right? And I wanna go... What do I need to change? Eighth! Let's go, chat. We're learning. All we could probably do is just invert. <laughs> we just made it that it doesn't sound right, but it still worked. But he gave us like a full loop. Now I'm like, uh, maybe I should like add something more to it. Go back to pads or something like, I don't know, uh, synth. We're just like adding. You know what? Now I want more. I want more stuff in it. I, I don't know what I want, but I want more stuff. What do we got? Yes, I want it. Cool. I'm just gonna keep that. I'm just gonna keep this. Eighth! 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 Cool. Okay. Do you guys see what I'm getting at? You can expand for so long with loop theory if it's a perfect loop. You can have so many ideas. And what you have done here, once you have that many ideas, we, we created, like, let's just say, for example, we've made 15 ideas on top of it with just palettes. Just bunch of palettes, okay? Now what we can do is that at some point throughout this loop theory, this is gonna get really busy. We're, we're going to get so far into the palettes that like everything is just now like not working because we have, we have kind of like done so much. Now what we can do is select something within the ideas, the palette itself, and we can start over completely brand new ideas. And then from here, we can start a new one. We know it's in the same key, so we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And now we do this, we do a full new process. And then from there, we keep making more and more and more and more and more. We have more 15 of these, just like new ideas. Okay. Now we have created this and let's just say we did this theory. Okay. So my limit for loop theory. Okay. My limit for loop theory is three times. You do three separate variations with the changes on the eighth every time. This is primarily to transition from one to another. This is my intro. This is my bridge. This is my outro. And then what I would do, since I have collected this such a big palette of sounds, I would just find ways to put them together. I'll just find ways to how to really incorporate them into my track. So I would be like, all right, let me just create a full silence here and then another silence here. This section, this empty section will be my drop. And then I'll create another silence here and another silence. And now this will be my second drop. And guess what? By that time, I have a full song. Okay, so these are the points of a loop theory. Okay, so if you want to get it and you want to practice loop theory, this is how you do it. You start off with the key signature you want to go for. Make sure you make a four chord pattern. And then on the eighth bar, change that fourth chord. The moment you change that fourth chord, go ahead and start designing your palette. You don't have to design per se. You can literally use the presets that you have probably bought and have been collecting dusts for like years. So just go through your presets 
find what you want. Like, I want something plucky. I want something drony. And then you just start f***ing just applying as much info you can. Create the big palette of, of ideas and then start transitioning and making moves throughout them. It makes your life hell a lot easier when you have a big palette than just like, you know, working on it one by one.